Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be doing another episode of Movie Spotlight. And today we're going to be looking at a an, a Halloween cult classic. Um, and that's going to be The Monster Squad from 1987. And this is a film that uh, was not extremely popular when it came out. It, it had a strong underground following. Basically what happened was is after the Goonies came out in the mid-80s, there were a lot of copycats that, that kind of sprang up. The Monster Squad was one of the more memorable copycats. Um, and basically what happens is you have a group of kids that have their own little club. Usually there's maybe one or two older kids. In this case, there's kind of a, a kid who's maybe like uh, two or maybe like two or possibly three years older than them, uh, who kind of is like a greaser type of character. And then you also have the older sister who is probably more like seven or eight years older um, and definitely older than the other boy. Unlike in The Goonies, where Josh Brolin's character is about the same age as some of the other older female characters in the film. Um, you also have the same kind of idea where you have Fat Kid in the Monster Squad, and they literally call him Fat Kid, and that's why it's it's, it's fucking hilarious. Unfortunately, uh, that actor did pass away, actually, I think a few years ago. Um, but you have Fat Kid, and then you also have Chunk from the Goonies, and it's the same kind of idea. It's like, okay, you have the various stereotypes. One of them happens to be the Fat Kid. Um, and But... You know, other than the the kind of basic placement of the characters in terms of the copying of the archetypes, um, there's really not much else that you can compare it to in terms of the Goonies because the Goonies has a very different story to it. The Goonies is about finding pirate treasure and going on this adventure and One-Eyed Willie and all that stuff. Um, when you look at Monster Squad. It's more about these kids realizing that there are these creatures that have come into their town and they need to somehow stop them because the adults will not believe them. Um, and Or, more or less, they stop them because they're the only ones that believe that they can stop them. Um, which, I guess, is kind of true on both counts. Um, now, the main character, his, his father is also the, uh, the the police chief of the town, or at least one of the police officers. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but it's the same actor who's actually from Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Um, but basically, in this film, you know, you kind of like, you know, the mom and dad are having marital problems and stuff like that. They do a little bit of stuff to kind of flesh out the kid characters, which I do like. Um, it's one of those films where, you know, they're... They're, they're not necessarily just stereotypes. Like they, they have moments in the film that work. Like, Fat Kid has so many moments in this film. Uh, he kind of almost steals the show. Uh, but then you also have the introduction of the horror elements, which really wasn't well, not, it was kind of there in the Goonies. It wasn't 100% there. It was, you know, you had the stuff with the octopus and all that crap at the end, but for the most part, there weren't really many monsters or anything like that in the movie. It was just kind of an adventure. With this, it's based around the monsters. So we have these universal monsters, which really get introduced in the opening scene where you see, like, Van Helsing, uh, or their version of Van Helsing, and he's killing these, these female vampires and stuff. Um, and it's actually kind of brutal, to be honest. They show, like, you know, the women getting stabbed with stakes and all this other stuff. Um, and it's, uh, I, I laugh at it, but it's just kind of because, you know, the, it, the, the tones in this, in this film are kind of counterintuitive to one another because you have this kind of weird sort of Goonies-esque comedy combined with this, what would seem to be very graphic violence. Um, but like I was saying before, the universal monsters are really the main enemies. You have, um, Dracula, the Wolfman, which comes, which, you know, the, the biggest line in the movie is Wolfman's got nards, uh, which is actually what the documentary, uh, for, uh, the Monster Squad is being named, which I think that is coming out either relatively soon or it just came out. Um, but that would be something I'd actually be interested in viewing in addition to the film itself. Um. But, you know, the, like I said, Wolfman, you have the creature from the Black Lagoon, you have the uh, the Frankenstein's monster, um, I'm trying to remember, you have the mummy, uh, I almost forgot the mummy, because he's in there too, um, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of characters uh, that pop up from the Universal Monster movies that's actually kind of interesting, where it's... Uh, it's taking them out of maybe what we would consider the traditional universal universe and putting them in this in this different kind of weird setting, but not really changing them a shit ton. Um, like, the Wolfman is still kind of brutal. Like, I mean, there are scenes where the Wolfman gets, like, ripped apart and put back together, and the transformation scenes uh, with the Wolfman, too, are also very graphic for a kid's film. Um, 
Then you also have the two with the the with, with you know the group of kids. You also have the uh, the little sister archetype. So, but she's also a foul mouth little sister, which makes it kind of funny. Um, but you know, it's it's a movie that's that's very much a product of its time. It's if you don't appreciate you know the kind of fun zany insanity that was the '80s in terms of cinema, um, I don't think you'll appreciate this film very much. If you haven't grown up with the film, you might not appreciate it as much. I actually uh, first saw this film when I was older. I think I saw this when I was probably about 15 or 16 uh, for the first time. I didn't actually watch this when I was a kid, like a lot of people did. Um, but I still love the film because I I love '80s movies. So it's just it oozes that kind of 80s nostalgia adventure film. Again, it it's sad because I love the movie because I also love the Goonies. Um, but I almost like Monster Squad more just because I'm more of a softie for horror. Um, which is, again, I don't know, maybe it's maybe that's the reason. But, uh, you know, I, I've always kind of juggled the two. It's like, I, I have to decide whether I actually like this movie or whether I like it because it perfectly mirrors the Goonies and does, like, a good job. So it's like I'm watching the Goonies. Um, but uh, you know, it, it it's a goofy film. It's not meant to be uh, anything too too serious. Again, despite the graphic violence, um, but it, it's a fun little story. It's a short movie. They they have their own little thing uh, where you know they have their their whole. The, I think that this was again supposed to try and launch something a, a little bit like the Goonies did, um, where it was supposed to be some sort of a uh, you know a launch pad for a bigger product, uh, you know, Monster Squad toys and all this other kind of stuff that they probably did. Um, and it, it just, apparently, for whatever reason, it just never took off. I guess people just didn't really get attracted to it. They were done with that kind of stuff by 1987. Um, and you really didn't see a whole lot of it, actually, after that, when I, when I think about it. Um, you know, I, I can't think of too, too many films um, in the immediate future after The Goonies came out that really kind of captured that lightning in a bottle like that film did. Um, but the thing with The Monster Squad is it just hung on. It hung on for so, so long as a film. Uh, you know, this thing went underground for so many years. And I remember it got drudged up. Um, uh, there were a few big ones, I think. I think the Nostalgia Critic, I'm pretty sure, drudged it up at one point and did a, a review of it, which I think got a lot of publicity towards the film, at least at, at the time. Um, but this thing was a huge underground movie for a very, very long time. And it, it's kind of fun to see it, you know, up in the mainstream again. You know, this is a film, it's kind of like almost like a Christmas story. Uh, if you want to compare the two, you know, uh, at, at, there was a point in time, and I know it's, it's hard to believe, where A Christmas Story was not a movie that people really knew about. It was like, a lot of it was just, you know, you caught it on, like, cable access at, like, midnight in the 90s. Um, but the, the, the film was not uh, a huge thing, and then eventually it caught on, and now you, you can't go anywhere without finding that movie being aired on some television station somewhere, um, you know, around Christmas time. It's just, I think there was a point in time where they had, like, a 24-hour loop where the movie was just on on repeat on a channel. I remember when they used to do that. That, that was dumb, too, but... It reminds me a lot of that, except people aren't exploiting it to that extent, which I like. I like it that it's kind of like people know about it now, but it's not this huge thing where they have to splatter it everywhere and smash it in your face. And, oh, hey, look, now Monster Squad. Look, we're, maybe we're going to do a Monster Squad, too. Um, and for anybody thinking of that idea, please, for the love of God, do not do a Monster Squad, too. I'm still waiting for Goonies, too. Um, so maybe if they can pull that off, then we'll do it. Then we'll do one with Monster Squad, too, except maybe, you know, we'll have to replace Fat Kid because the actor's dead. Um, but outside of that, you know, this is just kind of one of my little Halloween favorites. And since we're going into October, I figured it would be appropriate to highlight it on Movie Spotlight. Um, but I want to know what you think. Have you guys seen Monster Squad? Do you like the film? Do you not like the film? Um, do you remember it fondly as a kid or not? Uh, you know, put your thoughts in the comments below. As usual, I like to read them. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?